live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Accelerate 19. Brought to you by Fortinet. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live in Orlando, Florida for Fortinet Accelerate 2019. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host for the day, Peter Burris. Peter and I are pleased to welcome back to theCUBE Patrice Parrish, the Senior Executive Vice President of Worldwide Sales and Support from Fortinet. Patrice, it's a pleasure to have you fresh from the keynote stage here on theCUBE program. Yeah, well, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity. So, lots of people this morning in an energy-infused keynote, starting from all this loud music that I loved. It helped wake me up, so thanks to your events team for that. About 4,000 attendees yeah. from 40 countries. You have a ton of partners here. You can hear a lot of the noise behind us. You, I, I'd like you to share with our audience the connection that you made in your keynote about what you guys shared last Accelerate 2018 and the connection to the World Economic Forum from just a few months ago. Okay, well, last year we definitely, in fact, exposed our strategy in terms of the product, in terms of the go-to-market, and, uh, and of course how we can in increase, in fact, the value proposition to our customer. It was all about the fabric and the ecosystem that we build around the fabric. So, um, so we have been, of course, since now 12 months working hard on expanding and going what we call the phase two of the fabric. And uh, when Ken went to Davos, which the world is coming from early in January, um, and when we, we got all this, uh, I will say, a vision from Klaus Schwab, which is the chairman and the founder of the world, we coming from explaining that the, the fourth revolution that we're all going through, uh, the cybersecurity is a massive, I will say, problem for them. And it will be a key point for the future because they will enable, in fact, most of those technology and, and usage that we will go for this revolution, so. It's intrinsic. It's intrinsic, yeah, so it's, it, they call it the guardian, so it's really something that if we can't, you know, um, fix this problem, it's all about digital trust. So none of the user, you, myself, we will not trust maybe voting system, or you cannot trust, so, and we know that everything is going digital. So it's, uh, so that was really, and, and they expressed the, um, the need for, of course, uh, the education, because you need to educate and you need to you know, increase the, the, the skilled people, especially in cyber security, as we have a, a huge shortfall, it's about 1.5 million, some say even 2 million for next year. Um, the need also to work as, as an ecosystem. So, uh, and, uh, and for them, the ecosystem is really to see public, private collaboration, but also uh, government, uh, technology, companies like us. And that, that's, in fact, the purpose of Davos, really to bring all these different, in fact, groups and be able to talk and share and define some line for the future. And for us, of course, the concept of the ecosystem, it's all about um, building around, in fact, this uh, major problem that we're facing as, as the, all the threats. In fact, uh, a collective approach where everybody can add value. We, as a vendor, we build technology, we build a lot of value, but we can't be with each of the customers. So, and we want to build a partnership, not only with the partner, but also with the customer, because cybersecurity is a real-time problem. So when something happens, you need to jump, and you need to make sure that all the line is set, and then everybody can work together to fix the problem. So, this ecosystem really resonated very well for us after we, we was talking last year at the Accelerate. Um, and, and the last, I will say, pillar for the economic forum is about, of course, education. And so, and, and clearly I was mentioning one of the, uh, the um, um, engineer from the, the CERT, which is a nuclear agency in, uh, in, uh, in Europe, um, Gianotti, and she said that really, of course, the problem is that with the robots, we will have a lot of, uh, in fact, job that will be limited. So they talk about 800 million. So it's a massive number, but they see, they see this more than an opportunity to upskill people. So the education is really helping, of course, especially the young generation, to go and ups to upskill it, and especially on the cybersecurity, because as everything is going digital, we have to secure everything. So it's really, these businesses will grow much beyond that what we think today. So those three pillars, um, the education, the ecosystem, and of course the technology 
And the good uh, news is that Ken was representing, in fact, cybersecurity at the Davos. So it was also a great uh, moment for us to see, in fact, uh, pushing Fortinet at such a level of discussion. So those three pillars, education, technology, and ecosystem, of course, fit very well with uh, our strategy that we build. And that's why I decided to share a bit this morning, because it's not everybody going to uh, such a place. And it was really resonated well in terms of the the strategy and the vision we are, in fact, pursuing. So um, that's a bit the... So I want to build on, uh, on something you said, and I want to do so, I want to uh, paraphrase a Peter who's much smarter than I am, Peter Drucker, who observed many years ago that there's a difference in strategies between what he called value and exchange, which is a presumption that what I'm selling is valuable, and value and utility, which is a presumption that the value stems from how something's used. And that notion of partnership that Fortinet has put in place with its customers so that they can get value in utility is so crucially important. And you talked a bit this morning about you know, the different levels of customization and, and, and how you're going to allow customers to yeah. engage you and apply technology to suit their business. Could you talk a little bit about that, especially based on your experience in the field? Yeah. So. As, as I mentioned, I think we, that's been also our sales strategy from day one. So we, we always consider that in order to succeed, we need to work and we, through the partners and through the people that are very close to our customers. So, and as technology evolves, of course, it's a real challenge to keep them at the level. So because we, even for us uh, internally, just to understand and, and be uh, always at the top uh, level about uh, the new technology the, the, that we're putting in place, we imagine that just for the employees is a challenge, so we do a lot of training, but then for, for the partner it's another challenge. So uh, I think we have been always trying to help them to, of course, evolving on, on this expertise, uh, but we don't see that the, the cloud, and the, of course there is a certain, I uh, will say, trend about, okay, let's go direct, because we don't, cloud can allow to sell direct to the customer, so you don't need those channels, so there's no value for them. We don't see that in the cybersecurity, because it's a much more complex environment, and I think it, that's why we've been successful. And we even seen some of our competitors, they tempted to go on this direction. And I think it's maybe one of the challenges they will face in the future. So for us, the key message I was trying to give this morning to the partner is really that we count on them, it's, it's, it's a partnership, it's very important, and, and of course, when we adapt our, our partner program, we want to learn from them to make sure that the, 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 the three pillars of this, this uh, uh, channel program will fit well with their, in fact, view, because of course we have from a vendor a certain perspective, but they have, of course, a different perspective on their side. So, what I was mentioning, the, the go-to-market, because we see that some are very specialized on the cloud, some are specialized on the premise, so you have to, we have to define, in fact, what is the, the, the go-to-market here, what kind of expertise they are, in fact, uh, having. So because, as you see, we have very broad product offering covering, you know, from almost everything. So from OT, IT, uh, even embedded. So we are working with partners that are, as an example, on the connected car. That's for maybe the next two years where we will secure those cars. They are not the typical or traditional partner that you see on the networking business. So, so that means we, we try to adapt, in fact, uh, our engagement with them and, and make sure that, in fact, we build a value proposition that can fit, in fact, for the customer requirement. So it's really about be uh, uh, very close and, and try to have a, a bit a la, a la carte kind of uh, sure. approach and, and not try to enforce a very, uh, historical view that we had, in fact, to be honest, by, okay, you have like three tiers, uh, depending on level of business, and then you sign. So it's really moving all the way from that. Well, I want to stay in this notion of partners, because I think it's so crucially important. Um, you talked about the skills that they have, the yeah. capabilities that they have, uh, but your partners, well, partners in general, are amongst the companies that have to learn the most yeah. about cybersecurity. Yeah. Uh, because they are the ones that are trying to match technology to the outcomes that customers have. That leads to a question about your education programs. Yep. I got to believe that there's, that even as you're trying to educate your enterprise customers, you're also really investing in enterprise, in, 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 in upgrading and upskilling yep. your partnership. Talk a little bit about the relationship of education and ecosystem from a very practical standpoint. Yeah, so it's a very good point because 
of course, we, we need to help them to evolve. And as an example, we have seen traditional IT partner interesting to evolve on this OT security. But they didn't have too much skill, so it's, it was new for them. So, um, so with the, the purpose of building this NAC trainification course, which we have eight level, uh, which started 2015, and we have about now almost uh, 200,000, in fact, uh, certified engineers, a very large portion of those engineers come from partners. So on this program, and, and in fact the evolution of the program, depending on where you want to play, if it's cloud, then you will have to go for NAC4. If you want to go beyond OT, it can be NEC5. So we build, in fact, this expertise and we ask them also to, of course, follow those courses. So the engagement with us, will, the requirement will be also that they have the right certified engineer, depending on, on level of engagement they want to work with us. So, so we build this course, which is a lot of work, and we, we have a lot of uh, big team making this happen. You have to refresh constantly because it's evolving almost every day. But that's really the great value. You may have seen in the past on the networking side, Cisco had made a bit the similar approach, which was very successful. And I think we went like three years ago on thinking about this. And that's what we are achieving right now. And we are, in fact, the most, I will say, uh, advanced in, in such an approach. And I think it's, uh, our, our NEC certification is becoming a bit the standard on the market, both from end user, but the partner. And even going, as we was mentioning, we are also working with the uh, academics to build, in fact, and, and, and train, in fact, new engineers that were coming on the market in the next two or three years. So we help them on, on it's not pure, I will say, product. It's really about cybersecurity expertise that we have. And of course, we help them on understanding a bit how the, the 14 value can, can deploy on, on the customer. But, so that, that, that's the aspect, and we try to, target, of course, young, I would say people going for university, but also veterans. So we had this uh, program to bring those veterans because they're also looking, we're talking about upskilling. That's a perfect example on bringing a chance to them. And I think it's high level, maybe it's a bit, uh, you know, uh, think that we, we have a high pretension, but we want, of course, to help on resolving the overall challenge to be, un be unemployed. So I can tell you that if you invest time and you get the certification on cybersecurity, you will never have any problem to have a job. So that's a bit the overall uh, idea we have behind this uh, education and certification. And truly the, the partner, I will say, evolution in terms of the expertise, it's, it's based about this NEC. All right, Patrice, as we kind of get towards the end here, let's talk about outcomes. Peter mentioned that word. I know that in, I was looking at my notes here, that in Q4 of 2018, service providers and managed security service providers represented 11 of the top 25 deals. You guys also closed a massive seven-figure deal in Europe. Let's talk about uh, outcomes that Fortinet and your partner ecosystem are helping businesses achieve at the business level, not just in terms of, obviously, improving security, but are you helping businesses generate new revenue streams, get to new products and market faster, identify attacks and become proactive? What are some of those really key outcomes that you're proud of? Yeah, I think the, uh, and I was part of the uh, presentation last year, we, we all, I would say, on this uh, digital transformation journey. All company, even, even us. So we're evolving with much more tools, much more automation. So I think every sector, whatever is public, private, company has to go for this evolution. So, and the biggest challenge is all about digital. So again, the blocking point is about security. So last year we, we expect about how we can help with our positioning our platform, the security fabric, to run to this obstacle. And that was the purpose of the security transformation that we were talking last year. And I know some even completed as uh, relayed a message. It was interesting that uh, was part of all. So uh, I think it's really try to unlock this uh, digital transformation that add business benefit because at the end is how those companies will evolve in the future, generate more profit, be more efficient, uh, leverage, I would say, the data that they're collecting from almost everywhere, from customer, but also from the sensor, and, and transform this to a more business intelligence, and then, I would say, uh, generate, in fact, future revenue and future dollars from, from that. So that's, that has been a bit the, um, the idea behind. So we definitely help um, on, on evolving and, and going to this uh, digital transformation journey. And uh, I think we, we had few examples, of course, 
as, as uh, one of our customers, they're deploying worldwide on the gas station, in fact, you know, um, a better customer journey. So typically, of course, you come, you, you try to make your gas and you want to be connected. And, and they, they try to increase, of course, by upsetting a lot of things. So you get, of course, you go for the coffee machine, but you can even buy many goods. So we have been deploying, you know, with our secure access. So they have a secure access, they go for the internet. So that's where we play with segmentation. But our wireless, which is fully connected also to the, the, the Foligate, and, and the analytic tools allow them to do a business intelligence in terms of where people are moving inside you know, the shops. And then you know, redesign and rethink about, okay, how they move here. So that's, that allowed them, in fact, to accelerate even more business or decide that maybe this spot doesn't work well, so let's push the other side and involve. So that's typically the, the value of uh, you know, all this intelligence that we can grab from the, the, the data that we collect to transform to a business value. So I want to make one comment before we close here, and that is that I don't know the degree to which people really understand the relationship between secure networking and digital business. Data is an interesting asset. Yeah. It can be shared, it can be copied, it can be easily corrupted. In many respects, over the next five years, we believe that people will recognize that network security is the basis for privatizing data. It is what you do to turn data into an asset. Yeah. And I don't, think, I don't think people have made that connection to the degree that they need to. No, I agree, I think I agree, because maybe the mindset, they think about network, they think about wired. In fact, we're talking about 5G, we're talking about wireless, so the data is that what we want to protect because we don't want that people store your personal information or even company. But, but it's more than protect, you want to create the asset. Yeah, we want to create the asset. And then, and then of course, when we talk about network, it's no longer, you know, wise. Of course, it's much more virtual, I will say, networks. And that's a bit the misinterpretation and why they feel, okay, the network is moving away. No, it's not, it's even more in the future. And I, as Ken mentioned early this morning, I think the edge will become much more important in the future because the compute power that we are having now on, on every device and even, that will, in fact, allow to, of course, generate much more data here, and you need to protect. You notice when you need to go and to consolidate this in the cloud. So it's really, the edge will become a very important aspect. So, But it will be an hybrid, and that's what we, we feel as Fortinet, we have been building, in fact, a very comprehensive offer, and, and to the partner and, and, and to our customer, we just want, in fact, to give them the time to move at their pace. But they have everything ready for today. That's a bit the uh, concept. Well, if only we had more time, Patrice, we could keep going and going. Thank you so much for sharing some time on the program today, talking about your GTM, what you're doing to educate partners, customers, and this tremendous potential that Fortinet is attacking. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much, I really appreciate it too. Thank you. We want to thank you for watching. For Peter Burris, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE.